So we're on a race. Our goal is to get from downtown to a park that's not super close to any major transit hubs. But a new mobility experiment may be changing the transportation game. I'm taking a lift. I'm taking transit the whole way. And I'm taking something that's a little bit of both. A publicly funded ride hailing service. Got one. Salvador is coming in one minute. Here in the transit tunnel. Trying to get out of this traffic. 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 We are still um, stuck in traffic. Traffic is gone. We're moving and hopefully beat everyone else. The bus is 13 minutes away. We passed Mio at the bus stop. We just dropped off the other passenger in the car. I'm calling our friends on the bus. They are six or seven minutes away, they say. No, I'm speaking to the camera. I think we're less than 10 minutes from Seward Park. I'm here at the finish line at Seward Park, and I don't see anyone else. Okay, I'm gonna take a step back and explain why we did this. Transit is great for the environment, but in some neighborhoods like this one, there just aren't many options. Now, some cities are looking to ride hailing models for solutions. So, can it work? Seattle's transit agency is trying to do that by making its own version of Uber. Sort of. In certain neighborhoods, the city is offering ride shares to and from light rail stations. So, you can use your bus pass to hail a VI. It's the company the city's partnering with to get to a transit hub. It's a year-long pilot funded by an experimental federal grant. And it's a novel solution to a few big transit problems. The last mile problem has to do with that final leg of the commute, from the bus stop to your final destination. If they're too far apart, that's a big disincentive to using public transit. Uber and Lyft tout themselves as a last mile solution, taking you from the station to your doorstep. But more often, they're just replacing trips altogether. Take San Francisco. Most Uber and Lyft trips happen downtown at peak hours. That means they're adding to the worst rush hour traffic at the best time for public transit access. They're creating more problems than they're solving. Seattle's trying to solve the last mile problem by targeting neighborhoods with fewer public transit options to begin with. The Rainier Valley is in South Seattle. It's a little lower income and more racially diverse than the rest of the city. It's got a light rail line, but not many local buses. Just look at the number of bus connections in South Seattle and compare that with, say, the University of Washington station. There aren't connections for people to use light rail. It connected the airport to downtown Seattle. It didn't think about who lives in the Rainier Valley? Transit officials figured this is where a last mile fix could make a difference. You can see that where bus service is maybe not as robust, that we're getting higher ridership there. The hope is that more transit access will drum up more light rail ridership for the whole community. Even if you do decide to take an Uber or Lyft to a transit station, it's usually a trip for one and doesn't actually take any cars off the road. But with Seattle's VIA program, carpool mode is always on and they control the number of drivers on the road to match the number of customers. One driver told me that during rush hour, it's kind of like driving a mini bus route. Uber and Lyft drivers spend a lot of time cruising around looking for passengers. It's called deadheading, which, despite the name, has nothing to do with Jerry Garcia. Anyway, they spend a lot of time deadheading, like half their time in some cities. That means a lot of empty cars driving around for no reason. Seattle's program tries to fix that in a few ways. For one, it's a smaller market. The trips are shorter, so you don't have to drive a long way between busy locations. Also, the routing software makes people walk a few blocks to meet the car, so the car doesn't have to drive further than it has to. Transit agencies around the country are scrambling to get more riders, balancing carbon with convenience. So if the program can actually expand light rail access, that could be a big deal. 
and a lesson for other cities. Or maybe they could use the program's data to design better bus routes. At the end of the day, this program exists because transit wasn't accessible for everyone. VIA is filling a gap. And I think future transportation infrastructure shouldn't need VIA if it's done right. But all around the country, people... <laughs> Ha 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 ha!